Okay, Natana Kawaste Nikki. My name is Lori Newbrass and I'm from the Blackfeet Nation in Montana. I'm a member of the Blackfoot Confederacy. We live in our indigenous homeland that now is on the geography of Montana, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. I came today because the headwaters of the continent and the very lives of my people and our cultural way of life is in danger because of the fracking. And the on we did not consent to this, nor will we consent to being the last generation that lives on that land. We guard the headwaters of the continent and that's that's what we do. That's who we are in every sense of the word. And the oil companies, the oil speculation that is going on for profit is not our way of life. And we are not going to be sacrificed so that somebody far off or away from us can make money. Somebody's drinking water. That's drinking water contaminated by fracking from a well in Butler, Pennsylvania. This is supposed to be drinking water from a well, but look at it. This is drinking water? We're supposed to drink this stuff? Yet we're handling it here in toxic protection suits as toxic waste. If I were to take one of these bottles of this so-called drinking water and go inside that office and dump it under carpet, I could be arrested for dumping a hazardous substance. And yet here it is as well water that somebody's supposed to drink. That's right. This is frack water. We don't want it in our communities. We can't drink it safely. We give it back to the drillers. I bet they won't drink it. Let's make them drink it. My name is Tess Pettish. I'm from Rockville, Maryland, and I'm a college student here for the summer, um, interning for Robbie Disu, one of the organizers of Stop the Frack Attack. Um, and for the summer, I wanted an experience in an environmental nonprofit and uh, was sort of drawn to Earthworks and the Frack Attack because, um, well, first of all, Fracking doesn't quite touch me personally, but I thought that the issues and you know the social justice issues sort of uh, ran close to my heart, and I just thought that it was really unfair the way that natural gas companies can sort of um, alter the natural landscape without the permission of the people who live there and without the consent of you know, the people who are actually drinking that water on a daily basis. So that drew me to the cause and yeah, it's been really fun working with the people at Earthworks. Okay, my name is John Fenton and I'm from Pavilion, Wyoming. And the reason I'm here is because I think that all people, no matter where you're from or what your background, that we need to, to come together to solve this problem, to, to, to stop this destruction of our environment, our way of life, our community, and provide some sort of future better than the road we're headed down right now for the, our children, our grandchildren, and to leave a legacy that we can be proud of. We can leave a clean environment, we can leave a place where people can be healthy, where they can have the essentials of life and they can appreciate what people did to preserve that. Can you tell me something about what happened with uh, your, uh, your cattle? Well, we were running cows on a kind of a big ridge behind the house and we're not sure exactly how the leak happened, but uh, we got a triethylene glycol leak, which is one of the chemicals they use in the, the equipment on the locations and 14 calves, probably about a month old, drank the glycol and were poisoned from it. It's just one of several incidents that have happened like that. And it's always excused as something else 
by the oil and gas companies, uh, whether they, you know, provide the money to do the, the studies of the bodies, it always comes back that it was not their fault. And uh, it's really impacted the way that we do business and it may result in us not having cattle anymore because it's not a safe environment. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I'm involved with fracking awareness uh, through FACT, which is Faith Communities Together for Frack Awareness, and through Tour de Frack, which is a bike tour um, to raise fracking awareness. Um, my concerns and my reasons for getting involved with uh, fracking awareness um, is due to primarily because of concerns for water in Ohio. Um, I've lived all my life in Ohio, and um, we are heavily reliant on good water, good groundwater, and I believe it's at risk with the practice of fracking and it's at risk for permanent damage, in which case um, that will change life for the worse. So that's why um, I'm involved with um, educa educating myself and others about the risks of fracking in Ohio. Nicole. I'm from Madison, New Jersey. I go to school in Oberlin, Ohio. Um, and I would say where my reason why I fight fracking so much is from my stories in Ohio and the people I know. And they live just one county next door to me. And um, their water was actually contaminated. And um, they first noticed it in their cat was losing the cat was losing their hair um, and so and they started to get sick and they were able to um, they did like a lawsuit and settled it in court and the company was is supplying them now with drinkable water every month on the contingency the gag rule they're completely gagged they can't go public with the information with the story and so um, I'm doing this to be their voice uh, I guess or try to help them in that way um, and because because the first well was actually drilled in my county that I go to school in and we fought tooth and nail to stop it and couldn't stop it. It's like 500 feet from a vineyard, it's the people that own the vineyard lease their land for this well. And you can literally see the, the, grape, the grape vines from the well, it's awful. And they, they run the well 24-7 when they drilled it because this is the part that gets me, is when they ask the people who lease their land, ask the construction workers, like, why are you running this thing at 3 a.m.? Like, why is there constant 24-7 drilling? And they were like, well, we want to um, get this done with before anyone knows what's going on. Right out of their own mouth. I mean, I never thought they could be so honest. <laughs> Well, my name is Josh Fox. I'm, I'm here because um, several years ago I received a proposal from an oil and gas company uh, to lease my land in the Upper Delaware River Basin for fracking. And I went ahead and looked into it and ended up making a film that spanned the whole country uh, going all around documenting people's stories of uh, fracking throughout the United States. And the film called, is called Gasland. Originally it was supposed to be for my area, you know, a community project. But we did send it to Sundance and luckily, unbelievably, we got in. Um, it then ended up on HBO, it was nominated for an Oscar and has gone all over the world. It's been seen by about 50 million people right now. So, this incredible community that I was documenting as I was going along um, America who were fighting fracking in their own backyards, in their own hometowns, slowly started to realize, oh, there are other people all over the country that are doing this. And you're seeing this progression of a movement happening. And this is, I think, the first rally in D.C. Um, and they called me up and they said, will you come down and speak? And I said, absolutely, I will be there. And all my buddies are here. And so I'm here to support and to talk about how oil and gas industry is literally fracking up the government. They are injecting huge amounts of money into the political system and that is literally contaminating our democracy. Every single dollar is a toxic dollar.
Hi, my name is Russell Mendel. I work with waterdefense.org. And I began my journey working on fracking uh, about a year and a half ago. I had been working in the Ecuadorian Amazon building rainwater catchment systems for people who had lost their water due to oil contamination. And when I saw what people had to go through without clean water to drink, when I saw the way that families struggled with severe health problems because they had water that was coming out of their, their sink or faucet that was yellow and contaminated, my heart just dropped out and I knew that this had to stop somewhere. So when I came back from Ecuador, I saw that this was beginning to happen in my own country, in the United States. And I knew that this was where it had to end. Because if we would allow this to happen here in the United States, there is no stopping it. It could travel all across the world and affect everyone. And I knew that if we stopped it here, it would provide inspiration for people around the world in the same struggle for clean water, for clean air, for a healthy future. So I came back and I looked for the people that were in this struggle. And I found them and I began just going out on the road. I went and did 13 festivals that first summer, signing, getting people to sign petitions. We collected more than 30,000 petition signatures that first summer. And that was just the beginning. Now we are finding that artists from all across the country and world are stepping up because they see that without clean water and clean air, we have no future. And it must stop here. This is our opportunity. The contaminating practices of fossil fuel, of extreme energy, has now entered the most wealthy countries and now entered places where it was ex lots of population in these in these areas and this is our opportunity to say no we will not allow it here we will not allow it anywhere because as long as there are people who are being uh, made victims to these contaminating practices for the profits of large corporations we cannot rest we cannot rest Patty Gorchev, and I'm from North Lima, Ohio, which is right 20 minutes south of Youngstown. Um, I went to a trustee meeting one night, and a plumber brought up the question of silica, crystalline silica sand, asking the trustees if they knew whether oil and gas was using that, and they weren't aware of it. And he mentioned something interesting. He said that as far as he knew, 40 years ago, the EPA banned that sand. We have since found out that the oil and gas industry is still using it. How, I don't know. But I got a phone call last night. Now yesterday I was uh, here lobbying Senator Brown's office and we were speaking to one of his aides and I mentioned silica sand because I'm concerned they're, they're going to frack at my daughter's school. And I said if the sand hits the track or the playgrounds, the kids are going to stir it up. It goes directly into your lungs, uh, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. Uh, what it does, it, it slices your lungs open. Uh, it's called ciliosis. It's the worst form of lung cancer you can get. And everyone that this plumber worked with is now dead because of the sand, which is why they banned it. So I went back to my hotel last night and I got a phone call from a friend of mine down in Steubenville. They got a phone call that there was a train coming in and they were hauling silica sand. When the train pulls up, there's a conveyor belt hooked to it. They put the sand on the belt, it goes to the trucks. Obviously, some of it is now hitting the ground, okay, because, you know, there's so much that comes out at the time. At the time. Um, when it hits the ground, the workers were telling some of the residents there that it is now contaminated and they can't use it to drill. So they're offering it to the residents, free of charge, trying to be a good neighbor and telling them, you know, they can take as much free sand as they want for their children's sandboxes, for their gardens, 
So I put a call back into Senator Brown's office today and informed him. Um, I, I understand now that the EPA is on their way. OSHA has recently issued a warning about this. Sand, that at the very least their workers should be wearing a particle mask. I understand they're reluctant to do that because they don't want to alarm their workers. The truth is they don't care about their workers. Um, and uh, anyway, the EPA has been called, OSHA's on their way, and when I called the Senator's office this morning, I was told to call the Attorney General. And I've got people working on a press release now to get this out. These people, it happens to be a very poor and uneducated area. And um, these people are grateful to get something free. Um, but the truth is, it's genocide. That's, it's pure, unadulterated genocide. They're going to kill these people. They're going to kill all of us. My name is Douglas Shields. Why am I in Washington, D.C. on July 28th? I'm here to give voice to concerns of the disaster that awaits us if we continue to do hydrofraction extraction of shale gas. In particular, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, we reacted to that back in 2010 and banned it. Uh, we understand how bad it is, what's at risk, and anywhere we can give voice to this concern. That's why we're here. That's why we came. Hi, I'm Bridget Shields. I'm here um, to represent my group, MarcellusProtest.org. And we're here because what's happening in Pennsylvania right now is um, undemocratic and unconstitutional and there are a lot of people that are sick and the problems that we're having are some serious issues with water contamination which is irreversible damage and we want it to stop before it gets any worse. And I'm calling on people, you people, to stand up and demand the rights guaranteed by our Constitution. What we as the Tour de Frac group are doing is carrying these stories and many more to Washington, D.C. to present to our senators and re representatives to bring awareness of the plights of the individuals as a result of toxic frac. Something has to be done. Will you join us? ago this was clean and clear and after the fracking started she was diagnosed with arsenic poisoning and her waters looked like this ever since now not only that it dries up after she fills about two of these for me the third one she can't fill yet the state agency in pennsylvania the DEP, tells her that this is safe to drink this is safe to bathe your children in this is safe to use in your animals she sold her house and got out. She got an offer for $10,000 on a $90,000 home, and she took it and got as far out of there as she could. We're carrying, in addition to the story, six gallons of this water with us on our bike down to Washington, D.C. Trucks and get off of my lawn. 